Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about everything that's happening in and around the city of Missoula. I guess I got a guest, Joseph Martinez, here on today. He's the director of MCT's Disney's The Little Mermaid. Uh, they're doing this performance this weekend and next week, so I'll talk to them about this and also the uh, next year's 2018-2019 season. Um, of course, you guys can also live under the sea because there is a flood warning in effect for your weather. Uh, that was a, a shameless transition from The Little Mermaid, but uh, 41 degrees outside. You have a high of 72. You have a low of 45 happening, so the temperatures are going to be warm, but also you have that chance, uh, that slight chance of thunderstorms and then chances of showers happening all weekend long. So be aware that the flood warning in effect goes until Sunday. 9.45 a.m. So if you guys are planning on going out and about, you may be aware of some of the flooding. But let's talk about some of the news that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. But of course, if you have been down to the river lately, um, you can expect uh, flood warnings until Sunday morning. The rivers are high and the floodplains are higher as many creeks, cricks, and what have you are filling up to the max. And Flint uh, Creek is one of them that poured over a nearby field up Mullen Road. The higher mountainside uh, still holds about 160% of the average snowpack for this time of year. In many places, there's more than 50 inches of snow water equivalent, which is like 50 inches of rainfall waiting to be released. Meteorologist Alex Lukenbell said that Twin Lakes uh, snow tail uh, monitor was, ju was just beginning to show melt off. When it lets go, it could drive the Bitter River to crest around 11.44 feet crossing the minor flood level around this afternoon. Water levels near Darby will also rise next week, moving from the current 5 feet to about 7.5 feet next Tuesday. And the last major flood that happened in 2004 went up the Bitterroot reached 7.8 feet. So they're slated to reach 7.5, so brace yourself for that. Um, those traveling in low areas this weekend and next weekend should go to the Lolo National Service uh, Forest website. You can also go to the Facebook page for current and road closure. For current road closure information, contacting your local ranger or district offices is also a good way to get current information information about road closures along this way. In other news, Senator John Tester is not worried about the so-called feud with Trump saying that, uh, saying in the Billions Gazette article, um, and he quoted, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, and the president is going to do what he's supposed to do. Uh, Tester said, I'm not worried about it. Um, he's vetting uh, the Veterans Affairs sec uh, Secretary nomination, Ronnie Jackson. He wouldn't have done anything different than Trump would have. Tester, the ranking Democratic on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, provoked Trump's IRE by releasing anonymous allegations against Jackson from 25 members of the military who have worked with him. They range from complaints over a toxic work environment to allegations that Jackson uh, distributed prescription drugs far too freely, drank on the job, and even wrecked a government vehicle. Tester stressed, in start quote, we didn't see this information, it came to us, and I was doing my constitutional duty, and I did what I thought was right and important to do. 10% of Montana's populations are veterans, and Tester always tends to go straight for veterans committees before any others. This year, Tester is running for his third time around as MT Senator uh, Democrat against a large roster of Republicans who are fighting for their chance to, uh, to take on Tester this summer in the primaries. So um, they're not fighting for, against him in the primaries. They're fighting to get the chance to fight him in the election in the 2018 Senate race in Montana. In national news, Missouri lawmakers say that they will convene a special legislation session to consider impeaching Missouri Governor Eric Gr uh, Greitens as the um, embattled governor faces two felony charges. The Republican um, uh, governor was charged in April with felony computer data tampering. Prosecutors allege that, that um, he ele illegally used a, fund a fundraising list from his military veterans charity, the mission continues to raise money for his 2016 campaign for gover governor. Richard says uh, the 138 members of the House and 29 uh, senators had signed a petition to call the special session. More than three quarters of each chamber that is required to convene the session. The special session is scheduled to begin on the evening of May 18th, which is the last day of the legislature's regular session and will last for 30 days. All right, so let's take a quick little look at that bird in Birdwatch. So um, the Osprey up at the Cornell Labs at the uh, University of Montana, just next to Missoula College. And if you take a look, you can see that Osprey um, is nesting, has been sitting on her eggs. Um, they, there was a, a post of her laying the third egg you guys can check out online as well. So this is the Hellgate Osprey camp, and this is live, so you can watch this anytime. 
All right, guys, without further ado, I'm going to have Joe Martinez on here, but I'm going to kick things off with another art clip, and this is the art installation at the Gallery, Gallery of the Visual Arts, which will end on May 18th. We're back here with Joe Martinez. He is the director of Disney's The Little Mermaid. That's right. Don't forget yep. the word Disney. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Disney's representation of The Little Mermaid, and you guys brought it to the stage yes. in musical form. And a lot of the things um, I've said, uh, read a couple articles, I read a couple of thing, cool things about it. Um, and one of the things is like you're trying to bring an underwater paradise on stage. Yeah, you know, and it's very interesting because not only do we have to bring the underwater paradise, as you call it, but we also have to do on land as well, you know, right. so it's become, it's, for our creative team over at MCT, it's been probably one of the most challenging things that they've ever done, but I think it's also been the most rewarding thing they've ever done because just the, the feedback from the show itself, the sets are beautiful, the costumes are beautiful, I felt like I was under the ocean, just things like that, you know, and we see it in rehearsal over and I was like, is this working? Is this working? But then when an audience says, you know, I felt like they were under the ocean the whole time or underwater, it was like, okay, we did something correct. You know, <laughs> we did something right. So, yeah, we've had a ball. We've had a ball with it. So Yeah, and uh, MCAT got a glimpse of a little bit of this when we did a shoot from the choir. There was a choir concert oh, yeah. not so long ago. Yeah. It was a Tuesday night last Tuesday. Yeah. And, um, the set was there in the background, and I thought it was a really beautiful set. Yeah. I, on that perspective, but that's just a little taste. But there's a lot more to it. There I've seen is, a couple of the ads on the Facebook yeah. and all stuff like that. But what can what do you think uh, people will be surprised to see without giving too much? Away? You know, I, I I don't know because I I think they know what they're coming in to see. They're coming in to see Disney's The Little Mermaid. It's based on the animated film, but it's got you know it was a Broadway show as well after it was an animated film, and so there's a lot of um, more character development, so I think they're going to be interested to know where Ursula actually came from and what makes her evil. Oh. There's a whole second plot about that, you know. But I think just when they come in, the costumes and the sets and the lights are, you know, just I, I think are going to take people's breath away. And I, I know it has. I mean, that's what people have talked about. You know, we always hear all oh, the actors are good or Ella is, you know, and they are. The actors are amazing and fabulous, but sometimes people will just take a little gasp when they see Ursula enter because of the way she looks. So yeah, it's just interesting to be in the audience and, and see what they react to. Cool. So, yeah. And um, like one of the things about the Little Mermaid is that she gives up her voice to be able to go on land. So Correct. how is it uh, like for an actor to basically be on stage to perform while not singing or, or talking. Well, you know, that that's the Little Mermaid story, but she has in, she has inner thoughts, which she, oh. tell, she tells us, you know, she sings in the second act, even though she's mute, you know, but it's all her inner thought. And uh, yeah, so it's not a, a second act of just Ariel running around not saying anything, so. <laughs> yeah, so you, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Exactly. Um, you have a lot of good castmates. You got Sebastian, you got Flounder, all these. All those characters you know, Flounder, Sebastian, Scuttle, obviously Ariel, Prince Eric, uh, Ursula, no. King Triton. King Triton. Yeah, yeah, they're all there, so, yeah. 
All right, cool. So um, this show is running. Um, I, I'm also going to ask some questions about some of the upcoming season as well. But uh, just to rehash, this show is going to be running all weekend long. Yeah, it and, runs and actually, next week. And next week, yeah. So we we close on May 13th. So there's still quite a few chances to see it. Uh, yeah, so another two weeks. Yep, and it happens every night, 7.30 p.m. Of course, Sunday's a little bit earlier, 6.30 p.m., and then you have your matinees on the weekend at 2 p.m. I've kind of uh, given uh, everyone a little update on this on my show a couple times. Okay, yes. Um, but also... Oh, uh, can I throw in one thing real quickly? The Tuesday? Also, the tu- oh, maybe that's what you're going to talk yeah, about. Look yeah, at exactly, you. Yeah. The Tuesday deal. Spectrum, um, Autism Spectrum, mm-hmm. the, you guys do a special show for them for free for uh, folks... Uh, 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 who work with or have um, um, spe- autism spectrum. Yep. Uh, I want to phrase this right. Yeah. We um, always say for those living on the autism spectrum. Right. Yeah. So you guys are doing a special show on Tuesday, and a lot of times, what does this sh- these shows entail? You know, it, it just is bringing down uh, sensory issues. You know, we're bringing down the lights, bringing down the sound. Maybe the action isn't as as busy. We leave the lights up. That way people, if they feel like they need to get up and walk out of the theater for a little while. You know, it's a very simple night, um, and it's probably one of the nights that the actors love the most, actually, because they're performing for people who are really wanting to be there, and, you know, and it's just a completely different vibe. Um, and, you know, we, we shorten the show a little bit. We try to make it uh, like a total of an hour and a half, and that's with an intermission. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's a, it's a very simple night. Uh, we, we have rehearsals this weekend, so we'll find out how simple it is with all the scene changes. And, you know, we have to we have to cut a few things here and there. So we have to make it fit within that time period. But, yeah, it's on Tuesday night. It starts at 6.30, and it's open to everybody, but that's a special night for those living uh, in the auti- on the autism spectrum. So, And their families, of course. E- exactly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to switch gears, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of your summer camps, first step prep bunch of uh, uh, cam- uh, day camps mm-hmm. and week camps for a lot of kids who are going to yeah. be doing your children's plays. And I think my first question is, what are you, you usually come up with a brand new uh, children's play for uh, your traveling MCT? Right. And this year, actually, our, our new show is Emperor's New Clothes. Oh. And that's going to have a special uh, camp the end of August. So it starts the week of August. Uh, it, it performs on August 17th. I don't remember what the Monday is before that. So that will be our new show, Emperor's New Clothes. But throughout the summer, starting the third work, week of June, we have six weeks of day camps. Wow. Yeah, so we have um, two weeks of Sleeping Beauty, two weeks of Treasure Island, and two weeks of Aladdin. So, okay. yeah, so it's uh, you, you can sign up for one week, you can sign up for two. It's up. It's just kind of up to you. And they rotate. So we do a Treasure Island, a Sleeping Beauty, an Aladdin, a Treasure Island, you know, so uh, so you can kind of fit in a show, uh, a couple, a different show during the summer. So. Yeah, and I always notice that uh, with, you know, like some of your shows that you bring people from all around the United States to come down and kind of perform together and go to a camp up at right. Flathead Lake. Up at Flathead Lake, yeah. Yeah, that's our performing arts camp, and that starts in August as well. And we have a 250 kids coming in from all across the country. And, yeah, we spend two weeks up on Flathead Lake, and we put together a show. And then we come back down to Missoula, and that performs uh, starting August 9th, I yeah. believe. Yeah, and it, so. it's like a two-night deal where it's like, uh, I think last year was like Broadway. That was, uh, yeah, we, uh, it was called Broadway Takes the World, I believe. Yeah. And we just did different things, where Broadway shows that took place in different countries. Uh, this year it's called I Love New York, so everything Ooh. that's based in New York. Yeah, uh, and we do, I believe, six performances. We do a Thursday, two Friday, and three on Saturday. Wow. So five performances. So there's plenty of chances to go. Go check those out yep. later in the summer. Of course, uh, I always notice that um, the farmers market is also happening this Friday, uh, this Saturday. Sorry, right? And um, always, uh, you have a lot of the kids who wander around for uh, some of those things as well. Yeah, uh, and all in their t-shirts, and you know, yeah, we just you know, a little bit of marketing for that, and yeah, so all those kids kind of wander around and. Like I said, they're in their t-shirts, and they might hand a flyer out to you, or yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. So that's uh, that's the summer. That's summer. <laughs> now we're moving on. We're we have still more to talk about. Right. You guys just, re- uh, I mean, you released this a little while ago, but we're going to talk a little bit about the 2008-2019 Missoula Community Theater. Okay. So uh, one of the things I'm personally excited about is Newsies. Newsies. Which yes. is going to basically happen a year from now. Exactly. Yeah, it will open a year from two weeks ago. So <laughs> so if you're familiar with Newsies, it's uh, 1899. Mm-hmm. Um, Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Gangbusters, uh, Union Busters, yep. 
yep. and then of course uh, uh, a bunch of um, paper boys yeah. start uh, a union. Yeah, they, they go on strike because they don't like what they are getting paid to sell a paper, and so they start a union. It's you know it was a movie in the '90s that didn't do well. It's another Disney, um, and it didn't do well in the '90s, but it's kind of found its traction. Oh through, yeah, you know through people your age, I should yeah. say, you know, who found that movie and then all of a sudden just kind of fell in love with it. And people would be surprised that Batman's in it. Exactly. Christian Bale. Christian Bale's in the movie, yeah, singing and dancing. You know, and like, it's always it. really cool when you uh, have a lot of famous actor, A-list actors now who are in there, some of those movies that you've never seen before. Exactly. And it's always like, oh, and then you, a lot of times people are just like, I want to watch everything that this person's ever yeah. done because they're such a good actor and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Just because your movie didn't uh, come out as well projectedly, economically, doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't really work out. Well. Exactly, you know, and because of that, uh, Disney decided they're going to make a stage play out of it, and they did, and it ran on Broadway for quite a while, and you know, it's regional houses, and it is. It's just a great, you know, show about working together and what you can what you can. Uh, make happen if, if you work as a group and yeah it's a great show so but that ends our season that's yep. the last show yeah, yeah. there's other shows happening <laughs> there, there are four that's, other shows that, I'm, play, I'm being biased of course because that's <laughs> the one I want to do uh, I just want to be that guy with like a cigar is like union <laughs> even like if that's like the only line I'm like, Come on one, whatever I want to be part of <laughs> and uh, the community theater is really great for anybody who just wants to be partake be a part of the theater department it's, it's you volunteer your time mm -hmm. but you get to be on stage you get to perform you get to bring our small yet growing community together. Yeah, and that's what I love about it. Like you said, it's all volunteers, and we're working with you. You know, you come down, you do shows with us, and we're working with lawyers and doctors and school yeah. teachers. And yeah, it's just so cool that vibe to, ha to have all that. And you're working with people you may have never met before. You know, right now with Little Mermaid, we have 12 kids, uh, 10 to about 15 years old, who have all made new best friends because they all come every night, they do the show, but they all go to different schools. Some of them live in Florence. And, you know, so that's what's really cool about the community theater, I think. Cool. And just uh, another rehash of the brand new season next yeah. year. Not news, not only the newsies. They also have a couple of the shows. Could you? Uh, yeah, uh, in order, just so you know. So starting <laughs> in the fall, we have Sister Act, which is based on the movie. Uh, and again, just great gospel music. Um, after that, we have Elf. The musical, also based on a very funny movie. After that, we have a, a, a play called Calendar Girls. Mm. And Calendar Girls was also a movie uh, that came out a few years ago, um, very heartwarming, uh, about a group of women who get together to uh, to put to get, uh, to make a calendar to to raise funds for better hospital beds. And it's just very silly. Wow. Yeah, it's a really silly. Um, Kind of funny, heartwarming story. And then after that, we have the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, which is a smaller musical. Uh, very funny. Uh, you get to watch adults play adolescents who are taking part of us in a spelling <laughs> bee. Yeah. So, and then after that, the little thing called Newsies. So. Yeah. I always when I think about like adults doing spell bees, and I just think of that uh, Jason Bateman movie, uh, Bad Words. Bad Words. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's like one of those movies where it's like, oh, and then you actually watch it and it's like, this is actually surprising. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's definitely what you can expect from a lot of shows at MCT because you guys always choose a lot of good shows. Um, you guys always have that one show a year that's more geared towards yep. adults. Yep. Um, the PG-13 show, there essentially. You go. Yeah. It, which one of those? Is that would be uh, Putnam County and then maybe Calendar Girls as well. They both have a little bit more mature themes. You know, and our mission as part of the community theater is to educate. And, that, and to me, that means... We have to do these other shows to let people know that there are other things out there besides The Little Mermaid or, you know, so that's yeah. why we always try to pick one or two shows a season that, that you know, people go, oh, I've never heard of that. I, I need to do a little research and I'll go see it. Cool. So, yeah. All right. So uh, I think that's covering everything I that's happening. So. Um, once again, Disney's The Little Mermaid is playing at MCT uh, this weekend. Um, it's going to happen all next week starting Wednesday through Sunday. There's an Autism Spectrum show on Tuesday night. Um, but also always look out for those play in a day camps that happen yep. on um, days off of school. So if you have a kid that has a day off at school, MCT is always doing some kind of yeah, play in a day. So yeah. that's just one something I don't want to like plug as well. All right, thanks. Yeah, thanks. I think that covers I think I know. A little, everything and a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to have me back on now for at least another <laughs> six weeks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thank you. I uh, got plenty of other show for you guys today. I'm going to have your first uh, Friday art guide right after this. As a project, when a physician on one of the rural medical brigades realized how many people he had coming in with complaining of a cough, 
and complaining of black sputum. And he was kind of looking around, noticed that people were actually doing their cooking inside um, in unventilated areas. Uh, and that that was leading to a huge amount of respiratory illnesses. And we tend to think of air pollution, I think, as being a big city problem and a big, you know, it's, it comes from factories. And it, it, but there's actually a lot of sources just around us. And a lot of people in rural places suffer from um, environmental air pollutants as well. Um, and so they started a program, again, working with Save the Children. Um, the Missoula Medical Aid helps fund purchase of the stoves, save the children, goes out and helps teach people how to make the stoves. And he was arguing that people trashed his property and they had to float. His, his place was up on Highway 287 that crosses the, the Dearborn River. And, and he claimed that if you floated from there to the Missouri River, it would take two days and people would camp out and they would trash his property. Is it your contention that it takes two days to float from the bridge at Highway 287 to the Missouri? Answer, it depends on water conditions. Question, have you ever floated that stretch of the river? Answer, yes. <laughs> of community-based services for mental health. And I don't know if you all saw that there was a handout out on the table. Um, and if you didn't get one but want one, just let us know. We'll make sure you get one. This shows what the legislature did in the last session in this arena. And also it shows what they didn't do, some bills that, that didn't make it through the process. But. The big shift that occurred in this session, and the funding went along with it, was to really try to move away from state institutions toward community-based uh, services and care. And um, you know, I, I can't even tell you how big of a deal that is from a public policy standpoint. And it was bipartisan support. I think some of these bills that are on this sheet passed unanimously. Uh, you know, you always read about the things that the legislature disagrees about. Well, this is one thing that the legislature stood together on and said, you're right, we need to move in this direction. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey, I like art. Do you guys like art? Well, it's First Friday and also May the 4th be with you. And uh, First Friday happens every First Friday of the month, mind you. Well, why not? It's First Friday, but I'm going to give you guys an art guide of the downtown and Missoula area because it's not just uh, downtown that celebrates all your First Friday art gallery needs. It's also more than just that. So let's kick things off, uh, starting with the Glacier uh, International Realty. They're starting their um, opening thing because this is the first time I've ever seen an art installation. And this is you can enjoy, uh, enjoy some art, installation, all sorts of different things happening there as well meet some people. Radius Gallery is also is a wonderful place. There's no, not, never just, there's never not known, no, no, nit, nit, not, no, uh, not just one artist. They have many artists that go to Radius Gallery and post their uh, art, uh, sculptures, and m many mediums at the Radius Gallery. And you can check that out. Um, the next one we got is 
at the Frontier Space, and this is the UM Showcase. So students um, completing their uh, post-baccalaureate from the ceramics program at the University of Montana will be showcasing their work from the pa this past year. The exhibi uh, exhibition includes pottery and sculptures made with a variety of techniques. The next one we got here is thoughtful photography and tea flavored uh, pie pop-up at Lake Missoula Tea Company from 5 to 8 p.m. It's a night full of thoughtful photography, delicious Lake Missoula Tea Company stuff. You can check out Emily Elliott's latest body of work, Spaces, which reflect on open spaces as explored through Western landscapes, both intimate and expansive. As a cherry on top of the night, Little House Pie's pop-up pie stand will be selling there as well. So if you want a pie, you want some tea, you want some art, that is the place to be. Lake Missoula Tea Company. Um, that didn't, I didn't mean to rhyme, but uh, First Friday, The Shape of Things at the Missouri Museum. Missouri Museum always is the first place on many people's dockets for the First Friday deal, and why not? It's the, new, the Shape of Things, New Approaches to Indigenous Abstractions. Uh, this exhibit is a new work New Works Exploring Abstraction was created by artists Molly Murphy Adams, John Hitchcock, Sarah Seastream, uh, um, Dwayne Slick through a printmaking residency at Matrix Press. Connect with artists at the MAM and art community on the first Friday of each month from 5 to 8. Enjoy some live music from KBGA, light refreshments, and gallery talk at 7 p.m. First Friday, they always like to have the artist or one of the artists come and talk at 7 p.m. at the Missoula Art Museum. So you can check that out at the Missouri Museum. Um, Clark Fork School, um, this is really cool. I always like these events because it brings a lot of kids, um, upcoming artists, to encourage them to get into the arts. Uh, the students of Clark Fork School's day and after school programs have worked with their classes to create a trash to treasure ins inspired projects. Uh, the aim of an inspiration was to take old junk and trash and rethink, upcycle, into new pieces of art. So these pieces are very in size, but are all incorporate a 3D element and are full of color design and fun. And this is gonna be at La Stella Blue, the place where they usually have wine tasting. Um, stirring with passion. So this is art, uh, stirring, sticks, uh, yeah, anyways, let me read this synopsis. Bear Creek, Montana's fine craft wood worker and chief Robert Kramer creates kitchen utensils that are not only useful, but beautiful to see and feel. And it's gonna be at Four Ravens Gallery. Up next, we got Adeline Gale. This is uh, Betty's Divine. Um, Adeline Gale, every, uh, uh, Every, so that's Adeline Gale Avery, for an, an opening reception for her latest exhibit, Recent Works. Um, this is first Friday, uh, hopping in at Betty's Divine, which is 509 South Higgins on the Hip Strip. She'll be showcasing um, selections from her collaborative show with Ariel Gregory and Britt Juchim uh, called Saga of Erald and uh, Astral Sunrise, a narrative series of light boxes filled with figurative sculptures and found objects assembled. So as you see, it's a plastic baby hand touching a cactus. Um, number nine, first Friday art show. This is woodcut, so the idea of this is that you cut into wood, you put paint on it, and you kind of put a nice little press on there. Kind of like uh, what they do with steamrolling for uh, the the Day of the Dead Parade. Um, join Missoula Historic Preservation, nope, my bad. Join Missoula artist Katie Manchin as she exhibits her new series of woodcuts elements at uh, Pure West uh, Christie's Real Estate. Um, a new venue participating in First Friday Art Walk. Hammond Arcade Park Level, uh, the Missoula Historic Preservation Committee um, is celebrating May Natural Histor Historic Preservation Month. The Unseen Missoula Pop-Up Museum will, face, will feature historic artifacts, art, newspapers, and photos from downtown Missoula. Explore the park level of Hammond Arcade, featuring one of the, um, the entrances to the underground steam tunnels. Um, the next one we got here is the Trout Series, Tight Lines, Lacey Hermiston, and this is going to be at the Artist Shop in downtown Missoula. Ladies, Hermiston uses acrylics on birch wood panels as an organic medium. This often adds unexpected elements to each piece in Trout Series. Tight Lines, uh, the subject, um, subjects are painted true to form, but creative licensing is taken with color. Up next, we got Herding Cats. Various artists are going to be at the uh, Gallery 709, which is the uh, Montana Art and Framing Shop, and it's at 709 Ronan Street, and you guys can do this in con conjunction with Missoula Gives. You got all these artists working on this uh, art installations. Um, Chris Audio, Nancy Erickson, Patricia uh, F uh, Forgsberg, Carol Hoffnagel, Walter Hook, um, Kendall Jan Jubb, Peter Kiefer, Barbara Morrison, Don Munt, 
Dennis Sloan and others. Um, Animals and Humane Society will have information about their programs in conjunction with Missoula Gives. Missoula Gives has already started. It started on Thursday at 5 p.m. It's going to go on until, well, until tonight, I believe, 8 p.m. It's going to be a 30-hour uh, stint where they're trying to raise money for nonprofits. So you can always go to MissoulaGives.org for more information. A little plug on there. You got... Uh, at Gecko Design, they have a very special, exciting lineup for the first Friday this month, featuring uh, paintings from local artist um, uh, May, M Miss Gabriel. Sorry, I'm not going to pronounce that name and butcher it. Um, so Miss Gabriel and Ceramic Arts from visiting creator uh, Marky DeBral. Uh, they will be hosting four local nonprofits for the annual Missoula Gives, uh, Animal Wonders, Soft Landing, um, and Missoula International School. And the ACLU of Montana will be all tabling on their own fun and unique attractions, all at Gecko Design, which is right next to Piehole. You can't miss it. Uh, the last, the second to last one we have here is Art from the Heart at Bernice's Bakery. The artists of Opportunity are a significant significant part of Opportunity Resources' quest to ex uh, expose to the public the special talents of those who have disabilities and in doing so raise the self-esteem of all those involved. The paintings that they make are entirely of their own doing, straight from the heart, unfiltered, um, sincerely at its best. And this is art from the heart. Finally, um, th th of course, there's plenty of other art Installations going on with your E3 Convergence Gallery is doing uh, another be uh, beginning of the end art installation. I, I didn't have a picture for you guys, but I just want to give a plug that before I get into the Abundant Bowl reception at the Clay Studio of Missoula. The Clay Studio presents a special bowl-themed exhibit highlighting the abundance of talented amongst our region's ceramic artists. This exhibit is in conjunction with the community events centered around creating works uh, for our local empty bowl events for the Missoula Food Bank. In addition, in the uh, 11 invited artist works, they will be feature a preview of five dozen community created bowls made especially for Missoula Food Bank's empty bowl fundraiser on June 27th. So the featured artist is uh, Eva Champagne, Donna uh, Flannery, Joshua uh, Knut Singh, uh, Mike Kurz, uh, Phil Ma Mann, um, George McCauley, Mantis Nino, uh, Sean O'Connell, Chris Pickett, Laurel Smith, and Emily Free Wilson. So enjoy all these artists and more for your first Friday events. This, is w this one's going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula. So those are roughly 15 different art installations, and there are about five or 20 more. <laughs> No, no, not 20 more, but about 20, 22 art installations uh, for First Friday. There's a bunch of other things happening there as well. Go to MizzoEvents.net for more information on that. But I'm going to end things with another art clip uh, featuring the Missoula Art Museum. So, um, wait, is this the Missoula Art Museum? I just need to double check. Yes, it is the Missoula Art Museum. I always get thrown off. Um, but here's some more art from Muse Missoula Art Museum. I want to come back and talk about some city council uh, meetings, uh, committee meetings from Committee of the Whole and Parks and Recreation. So stay with me.
Hey guys, welcome back. This camera means it's time for your city council committee reports meeting. Since it is Friday, I talk about all the committee meetings that happened on Wednesday. Let's kick things off with the committee of the whole. The committee of the whole meeting kicks off with what they're talking about. Some of the good things that are happening in the downtown master plan. Uh, committee will provide an update on accomplishments in the last year and priorities and goals for future with specific emphasis on plan update process. Matt Ellis. MSO hub and committee member of the master plan implementation of the master plan talks about the accomplishments that the city of Missoula and the downtown master plan committee has accomplished. We're pretty pretty proud of the fact that we've accomplished uh, approximately 70% of the current master plan. This plan was originally designed to be a 25 year plan and we've done it in less than 10 years, 70% of it. And so we're pretty excited about that accomplishment. All right, so there's still plenty of uh, stuff to be done within the downtown master plan, but 70% is pretty good. Um, this was a long planning process that began um, even before our Missoula talked about the future with Title 20. Uh, brief history of Missoula goes back to the 90s, of course, back when I was a little kid, many of the businesses in the downtown area came to fail, basically. Parking and access were always a problem, and it only seemed to, that the nightlife was the only thing that kept the downtown area alive in the first place. So here's Matt Allison once again. He's talking about public access type buildings, um, and he's going to start off with the public library. The new public library. Um, one of the things I'll mention on this is uh, one of the big goals was to keep um, uh, government and uh, you know public entities like the public library staying in downtown. And you know, if you remember when the master plan was first developed, that was a major issue for a lot of a lot of government services. Um, the library looked at other options, and so this is a pretty pretty awesome that they're staying downtown and doing such a, a magnificent development. We got a presentation of this in our board meeting. It's as you all know, it's pretty spectacular all right so of course he goes um street to street talking about some of the site of the different things and of course if you ever haven't already seen main street the conflicts brewing company is building right there um you just have to go downtown to take a look about uh look about now look on what they're doing over there so um Matt Ellis goes in to talk about some of the new buildings, mesh with some of the old buildings by going street by street. Missoula Public Library was just an example of many places of the future accomplishments um, and current ones. 1,200 units of housing has been added in the last decade alone, uh, along with many other properties that are being developed as we speak, including the Lambros property across from the old library right now next to uh, Kiwanis Park. Brian Von Lossberg reflects on the downtown master plan. Um, and this is what he had to say about um, how he feels about how it's going. Uh, and I think, um, so first of all, in the referral, there's a link to the plan. If you have not uh, taken a look at the downtown master plan, that's your easiest path to get to it. And you definitely should acquaint yourself with it. Um, it's been, uh, I think, the most helpful planning document, uh, certainly right up there with like a growth policy document that I've uh, had access to on council, so it, it's a great benefit uh, for the work that we do here. Uh, and you know, as Matt said, and I just want to underscore, I, I also participated um, as a committee member in the fundraising uh, for this update, and uh, it was really uh, a great validation and inspiring to go to people, uh, all all you know, businesses uh, throughout downtown, and and ask them to support an update to it, and just. Uh, nearly universally there was great recognition that the the plan had played a really positive role in you know guiding and shaping the development there, it, it obviously can't you know it doesn't specify exactly what's going to happen where but we talk a lot about being intentional you know with our growth and a lot of the things that we do and i think this is a perfect example of uh you know convening stakeholders convening the community to develop a vision for what downtown you know could look like would look like and then uh staying active uh every month this committee gets together you know every month and has been uh for years uh to help you know nudge and guide and remove barriers um all sorts of things to to see that plan realized um and as matt said uh we're looking at a four hundred thousand dollar budget for the update I have raised 350 now and there is an ask uh in the budget for 50,000 to me it's a it's a no brainer in terms of re All right so that w once again was a uh, uh, city council member Brian Vallosberg talking a little bit about that um 
Alan Buchanan from MRA talks about some of the uh, regions from what downtown has um, not done, uh, uh, as in her case, had, um, um, had, I guess a better word is like some of the, some of the um, speed bumps along the way with the downtown master plan. And this is Ellen Buchanan, Buchanan from MRA. You know, there, there's some things that maybe didn't move as quickly as I would like for them to move, but I want everything to happen right now. Mm -hmm. uh, front and main conversion, I wish we had a clear path to funding that because that to me is probably the, the single most important thing that can happen in downtown is to convert those streets to two-way. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the businesses on those streets will tell you that. Um, one of the things that has all right. So that was uh, one of the that was just a, a, a short example from Ellen Buchanan talking about that. But Ellen hopes that once MRA has completed their goals of renewing the downtown area, um, that MRA will get absorbed into downtown association and many other city of Missoula government stuff. So she eventually wants to work to a point where MR MRA is no longer necessary in the first place. So communities are created by council to get more information and to clarify any upcoming agenda items that the city can approve for, approve for in future meetings. A lot of community meetings on Wednesday are the brass tacks, the, the details, all the stuff that you, uh, that you love to hear about on Wednesdays. So I can talk to you guys about it on my Friday shows of, of course, um, they'll, I'll, I'll, I'll just end the meeting right there. Um, a lot of good quotes by a lot of good people and if you're interested you go to committee of the whole meeting from the uh, CI, from the city of missoula website i'll tell you how to access that and more at the end of this talk so of course in land use and planning it's a continue it's more of a continuation of the downtown master plan but it talks about the city's zoning ordinance and adopted title 20 which is constantly updated referred to revi revised the city or zoning ordinance is intended to make the uh, ordinance easier to read and interpret. Um, it also uh, includes a mandate uh, to maintain and update the ordinance on a regular basis, like they're, what they're doing. This process regular uh, review and updates allow staff to collect potential amendments and propose changes in an effective way while also complying with all the amendment procedures set forth in Chapter 20.85, which is the updated Title 20 which is why they have 20.85, because it's been going through a lot of updates. Of course, the next uh, two and a half hour meeting of land use and planning was just kind of to get through this meeting nicely. So of course, I'll give you a couple notes, personal opinions going around from uh, big businesses that don't really match the downtown area nicely. Um, one example was the Verizon building that people have been complaining about in the downtown area. And a lot of times um, you really can't do much um, about businesses that are already existing. A lot of times you got to um, and Brian Van Lossberg in this meeting, hopefully in his case, um, that the Verizon store fails off of that <laughs> street and then they're able to re, uh, re, re revitalize that area for more of a downtown looking feel rather than those neon lights that you guys get to see late at night. So, um, of course, you can watch this meeting. It's very detailed. It's very just like slide heavy, um, crossed out rich type stuff but I'm just going to move on to parks and conservation because this is a really interesting thing how they're moving forward because um, with the open space bond that passed in 2004 and ever since um, Mark Valiant uh, conservation lands management manager um, took the role back in 2008 he's been um, working on um, basically cleaning up the land pulling weeds um, getting volunteers together doing all sorts of things from the conservation lands program a program within the Missoula Parks and Recreation Department continues to progress towards goals out outlined in the 2010 Conservation Lands Management Plans presentation, which is more of an update of the 2017 season. Uh, but of course, in the 2018-2019 season, they want to develop of a recreational management plan for nearly 175 acres of recently purchased public open space in the Missoula South Hills. So here's Morgan Valiant with the uh, Conservation Land Management kind of giving you, and you a nice little flyover of what he's going to be talking about. Usually my annual reports focus pretty heavily on what maintenance we've done and uh, the research, uh, what we've been finding on our lands. I do have quite a bit more information in this report um, than in past reports on uh, budget needs and uh, you know budget enhancements that you guys are going to see coming out of the Parks Department. A lot of this has to do with the fact that this last winter we, we really did kind of an internal review of our conservation lands program. I'm trying to see where we are at uh, as uh, 
you know, we just kind of do that every once in a while, and this was the year to do it, and so we actually have some uh, some better numbers and better ideas of how to uh, increase management on these lands. So, All right, so uh, Morgan Valiant goes on to say that uh, he's been um – uh, they, they, they've uh, Morgan so far has been running all the natural parks in the Missoula area based on purchases from the Open Lands Bond. Basically, uh, there's no gratuitous um, to run the Parks and Rec Department uh, through the render, Parks and Rec Department of these conservation lands because they don't have a budget to maintain as such. Parks, um, basically, the whole idea of all these parks like Bancroft and whatnot is that these are natural parks, so they don't have like playgrounds or maintenance or a landscaping like type deals so it's this land that's purchased and just kind of left there like a lot but it, in a way the um the conservation lands management is to pres basically bring this land back to a natural state where you have animals and use it for educational purposes like watershed and more morgan talks about those parks that will become urban parks so th this is kind of a transitional stuff as well because some of these parks are kind of made natural but some of the parks they want to convert into more of an urban park. And this is Morgan Valiant talking about that. And then the third will be urban parklands with special resources present. And so these are areas that um, maybe will get developed into a developed park at some point or may see higher levels of development than what we would find on our public natural areas or our park preserves. A good example of this is um, you know, uh, the urban parklands that run through downtown Missoula. Obviously, we've got high levels of development next to an active riparian belt. I end up, I don't manage a lot of those parks, but I do manage that riparian belt that runs through town uh, that's critical for clean water and uh, wildlife passage. Um, all right, so uh, I'm just going to cut Morgan off right there. I'm running a little low on time, and I still have a lot more show for you guys. Uh, 42,000 acres are left out of the open space bond to complete its run since the 2005, back when the seeds proposed to this bond in the community. $42,000 of volunteer hours have been logged in a rate of uh, $15 an hour. So imagine this is all voluntary work. Um, a lot of the people that they get to volunteer help make trails and help uh, close some of the uh, um, natural trails that have have occurred from people walking on um, land that um, Morgan and the other organize, uh, other conservation lands people believe that is not an appropriate place to start walking, kind of like when you have the switchbacks on the M and people try to walk across there. They're, they were kind of tasked with making uh, barriers so people don't uh, go off the beaten path, basically. So Morgan... Um, um, most of what Morgan um, team did back in 2017 was building more trails and less work on maintaining the existing properties. Um, and uh, this is Morgan talking about some of the uh, um, um, some of the projects uh, that they're working on right now. Some of the things that uh, it definitely took a lot longer. Uh, we had some major construction that we ended up having to do on some road crossings where we started to have to do a lot of culvert work and rock work. Um, this is a before and after photo. That culvert pipe is under here now. This is all hand laid rock. Um, we ended up having some of the most pristine rough fescue bunch grass communities that I've seen around the valley, and I'm a total plant geek, so it gets me really excited. And so one thing we did when we built trails through that area is we actually went ahead of the trail, salvaged that material, and replanted it into our cut. So you can see this is all replanted material here. What we found is by doing that, it adds about, uh, you know, it doesn't quite double, but it's probably like an extra half to two-thirds of the cost of actually building the trail. But it takes about five years off of going in and trying to do restoration and get stuff to come back from seed and a whole bunch of time from coming in and spot spraying weeds. And after a year or so, it looks, just looks like that trail was just laid on the landscape. Um, All right. So uh, Morgan Valiant talks about some of the accomplishments and some of the things that they've done in the future. But here is something that uh, he wants to talk about in the upcoming project for 2018 to 2019. And he really wants to focus on um, some of the informational kiosks um, um, and also more uh, trails, connectivity, um, building a good infrastructure and restoration projects in the 2018 to 2019 project. And here's Morgan Valiant with my last quote from the city council, uh, from this uh, Parks, and Parks and Conservation meeting. Infrastructure and restoration, we've got this kiosk coming up. This is going to be what the kiosk looks like at Orange and I-90. We've got a huge restoration project up in the Rattlesnake Greenbelt. Uh, where uh, this is kind of on the holding block, but we're looking at 
with Missoula Water at potentially doing a, a, a parking lot up on Waterworks Hill. We're obviously looking at removing the water uh, Rattlesnake Dam and Reservoir. Uh, we're looking at rebuilding a trail, uh, a trailhead up in uh, Sunlight Property. We've got a Missoula Trail map. In addition to that, we've got a couple bike parks coming with new park development. Broadway Island, we've got a development plan, which I'll show you for that. We've got South Hill Spur Rec Plan and Hellgate Park are all new parks that are getting developed. We also are in the middle of planning, coordinating a water-wise garden rebuild, uh, a jumbo water tank upgrade, and that's a partnership with Missoula Water as well. Our Parks Open Space and Trails Master Plan is going on right now. We've got Max Wave that we're intimately involved with. Uh, that is also going to impact my program specifically. Clark Fork Islands, which is the, what we're calling the Klaus Property Tower Street area, where we might have an extension of the Milwaukee commuter line and several hundred acres of new open space. Green Oak Park encroachments. We've, these are encroachments that we have identified years ago and have not dealt with. They were illegally obligated to do. Knife River Ponds is the area below Macaulay Butte that's supposed to come to the city in 2019. All right, so I'm just cutting off Morgan Valley right there. There was a lot in this presentation. There's a lot to do in the city of Missoula's uh, Park and Rec Department through the uh, uh, the um, the lands man the lands management conservation lands management um, so right now um, the, they want to raise money for four hundred and seventy thousand dollars which um, well the goal I think the goal was uh, five hundred and forty thousand dollars and so far with the uh, two years via grants and other private donations they've totaled four hundred and seventy thousand dollars currently for just uh, the bike skills park that they plan on doing in Bellevue and Syringa areas um, there's a lot to do and very little money compared to what they need to move forward on these projects. Of course, most of the money that they're raising for this time is supposed to cover not only this year, but also next year. So there's a 2018 to 2019 update and master plan. If you are interested in learning more about this and you only got, I only gave you the brief. I, I like to skim over this stuff to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. But you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us for more information on that. Um, I'm going to have to end this pretty quickly because I do want to show you guys the flagship Friday video of the week and this is from Hellgate High School so and when I come back I probably won't have events for you guys because I'm uh, I ran out of time so uh, here is flagship Friday video of the week the heist gentlemen I've called you today because someone around here is a rat there are wanted posters all over town and they didn't get my nose right and it's one of your fault and now, I know I didn't make the, the call because I started the heist in the first place. It's got to be one of you three. I think you did it. Look at his shoes. He obviously did it. What? What's wrong with my shoes? You're the ginger. And you have the shoes you have to know soul. Which would make you the perfect rat. Which is what we're trying to find. The shoe fits the crime! It's obviously you! It's because the perfect crime fits the perfect shoe, Bigfoot. Ow! Oh! Gentlemen! This petty squabble will not lead us to the rat. Sorry, I zoned out. What's happened? Hmm? We're accusing you of being the rat who I can tell by your hair. Yeah, rat. What does my hair have to do with being a police informant? You're wearing a hat that most rats wear, which is no hat at all. Ha ha! I got you there. <laughs> what if he's the rat? I set the whole heist up. But what if he's not the boss? What if he's wearing a mask? Uh, 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 uh. No, it's real. You win this one. It obviously can't be me because I'm not affiliated with any cops. I mean, have you seen my shoe size? It's obviously not me. You might be, but Jackson, oh boy, 
you obviously are it and not me because I'm the best and you are not. I have an idea. Let's play Eeny Meeny Miny Mo uh, to figure out who did it. Eeny Meeny Miny Mo! Gentlemen, this does not prove anything that any of us are the rat. Can we get another shot of that? Who are you? I don't, guys, just don't get the wrong idea. I'm, I'm just the cameraman. Doesn't mean that I'm any less of a man than you guys. I'm just get here him, to boys. do my job. Ah! So we found the rat. That's pretty good. So, we found the rat. And I think we got a good camera out of it. We'll call it stars of the day. It's for a good day. All right. So we found the rat. But who's the mole? Hi. Okay. Let's talk about some things that are happening uh, where we want people to take a survey here at MCAT. MCAT, if you are a subscriber to Charter Cable and you're kind of like, eh, I'm not cool with that charter, go to uh, MCAT.org. <laughs> Um, you can talk about how you feel about Charter and how you feel about public access television's continuation with Charter Cable. You go to MCAT.org, you click on this picture, or you can click on Take the Survey to find out more information as well. Let's scroll through the next picture. Saturday drop-ins are happening this Saturday from 1 to 5. There's a lot of events happening today and tomorrow, but I kind of went over it with your first Friday events. Um, I'm not going to be able to talk about any more events as well, but uh, Saturday drop-ins are happening from 1 to 5 every Saturday until May 9th. May 19th is the last day for your kids aged 9 to 13 to enjoy some Saturday drop-ins. But local government is not going to help you for – we're talking about summer camp registration. It is open. We're already halfway full, or we have half left if you want to think it on the um, other side. Um, summer camps, um, we have four summer camps that are offering this year as well. We're going to offer it at the end of June 25th through the 29th, and that is our first animation camp. We got Time Travelers Camp uh, fresh off of July 4th uh, week, um, which is starts on July 13th or something like that. I don't know. I'm just kind of uh, going through that real quick. but. Wow, we have pretty much ran out of time completely. I may have about a minute or so left in the show. If you want to learn more information about my show, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. But of course, you can always Google me, Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me on Facebook. YouTube and um, on Twitter, all those th wonderful websites as well that you can find out more information about your um, last best morning show. And since this is the last seconds of the morning show, I'm going to say good day and have a good weekend. It's first Friday. Go out, look at some art. It's going to be beautiful. Then it's going to be stormy, floody weather happening this weekend and maybe next week. So flood warning is in effect. So take care. Have a good weekend and uh, goodbye. I'm Scott Ramp. Wake up Missoula. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.